Hey, what's up, The Figure Hunter? Today up for review is the Power Labs Heart Rate Chest Strap Monitor. So I have tested a lot of devices and wearing them all with a chest strap is the most fundamentally important way to get accurate heart rate data, which flows into accurate analysis, tracking, and training load all the different primary aspects that we would want for tracking a CrossFit training regimen. As always, everything on this video, this channel, is for the purpose of testing and tracking devices for CrossFit and high intensity interval training versus all the running, swimming, and biking videos that are on the market today. So a chest strap is fundamentally important. If you are wearing a device, you should not wear it on the optical heart rate sensor, you know, on the wrist when doing CrossFit because there's so much wrist flex and so much strain across that particular area and the likelihood of inaccuracy goes up very high, especially when you're doing real peaks and valleys with your heart rate, which is what interval training typically causes um, throughout a, a CrossFit workout. So the importance of a chest strap is fundamentally important, but the cost or all the benefits of the different variety of chest straps that are on the market today is not as important. So there's chest straps that'll track your cadence and your pace and your running. There's chest straps that will you know, record the workouts on it and you can dump it later. There's chest straps that you can do swimming tracking. There's chest straps triathlon tracking. There's all sorts of different chest straps, but the most fundamental thing we need is heart rate accuracy to keep up with the intensity of a CrossFit workout. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. I'm gonna do, I think, just an initial bought your first Garmin, how to set it up type of video. Uh, I have the Aura Ring still in tracking and I do a review of that and so many other devices down the road. So what we're gonna talk about tonight is the specs of the device. We're gonna look at it when compared side by side with the H10, the Polar H10 chest strap which I believe is the gold standard. Many believe it's the gold standard. It just is the gold standard. And we're gonna talk about it compared to the Polar H9 as well, but we're gonna look at it very specifically compared to the H10 and talk about some similarities to the H9 because those are some of the primary chest straps that are being sold on the market today. Garmin has a line of chest straps, but they typically are aimed at different focuses and different sports. So they definitely track your heart rate, but there are some that are better for swimming, some that are great for traveling, some that are good for running because they'll track your cadence and pace and within it. So we're going to talk about the specs of the Power Labs um, chest strap. We're going to look at it hands-on. We're going to compare it to the H10. We're going to look at the results. And obviously that's the bread and butter. That's the most important thing because when you look at chest straps on the market today, typically you're in the 60 to 90 maybe even $120 price range. So some of the garments are a little more expensive. So the cheapest most known chest strap is the Polar H9, which is $60. The Polar H10, which is what many, many people use, is $90. And we'll talk about some of the pros there. And then I think most of the Garmin chest straps are upwards of $90. Well, this is 50. And right now you can get it for 45 because it's 10% off. And they're saying that they will give you free batteries for a year. So if it runs out of battery juice, you get free batteries for a year. So we want to see, is it accurate? So yes, we can see it is less expensive, but is it accurate for keeping up with intensity of workout? Does it functionally work? Are there sort of things that I feel like, uh, this is sort of questionable or this is sort of uncertain. So looking at the specs, it does communicate and connect by Ant Plus and Bluetooth. It is single channel only, so you can't transmit it to a bunch of Bluetooth devices. I did not try to test to see if I could transmit it to a Bluetooth and Ant Plus um, device at the same time, but I was at, you know, testing many Bluetooth devices and it only connects to one. So one channel is IP67 rated, so it's sweat and just light water resistance, but it is not meant for swimming or submerging for any length of time. It is compatible with all apps, all watches, anything that'll pick up a chest strap, it will connect to. You just put it on and it'll, you know, link right up, send out the signal and make sure it's connected. Like I said, the battery will be replaced for free within the first 12 months if it runs out of juice and it's only $45. So with that, we're gonna look at a hands-on of the chest strap itself and the puck, how it works. We're gonna look at a hands-on side-by-side -side with the H10. Then we're gonna talk about and look at charts for the results when you see it's you know overlaid one over the other to see its absolute accuracy level relative to the H10, which is the most accurate. And then we'll talk about it in summary. So let's dive in. All right, so here it is in all its simplicity, honestly. It's, you know, it is basically the same concept as the H10, as the H9, as many devices on the market today. It snaps in simply like that, and it's just got the simple snaps. This is very universal for all the main chest straps, at least the 
a less expensive ones. Garmin has a little bit different design. Just use a, a coin to unscrew that to put the battery in, and then it just snaps in place. It has, you know, it, it, it doesn't have the same sort of quality feel that the H10 has. I will look at that in a second, but overall it is just basic and simple which is all we really need so the way it connects to ecg is reading your heart rate through these strips right here so this section here and then the same section on the side this design or i would say this size this amount of connecting material is the same as the h9 so the strap is basically the same we're going to see on the h10 that it's actually got more connection area which is you know more important for super high level accuracy but when doing a crossfit workout we'll see how accurate it really is so when it connects to the strap itself i actually like it because the connecting point is really close to the end a lot of them are sort of around the side so you gotta, gotta reach around your chest to get it to connect it just does a simple slide in loop and then you're done and there's really not much else to it so we're going to look at it side by side with the h10 because the h10 is really sort of held out to be like the gold standard and you know you'll see a lot of similarities so there's the puck it is a little bit shorter but a little bit thicker and if you see it sort of side by side the h10 sits more flush it doesn't have the big battery pack nor does it have these nodules that sit up a little bit higher it just snaps in place a little bit easier but it is the same sort of concept where you just have you, you pop this out with a little screwdriver and then you snap it in place and you're off to the races you cannot use them interchangeably because the distance between the connecting points is different and the thing that's different about the two is how much connection space is laid out so if you look at these sort of side by side if you were to line them up and start from point to point you see that this has about the same section it is wider but uh, the h10 is longer and then the h10 also has this sort of sidebar here that connects it just for better connection this this works better for swimming h10 fully submersible so you, you don't have you know you have you have to have more connection for swimming to be more accurate so if you measure these, and I did with the ruler, all that stuff, you know, it's the area, this is 26% smaller. So it's about 74% of the overall size surface area of the H10, and it's about the exact same as the H9. So you're not gonna lose anything there. The other thing that's a benefit of the H10 is it has these little nodules, like rubber nodules that sort of connect and hold it on, and it feels a lot higher quality as far as the strap itself, but this strap feels the same quality as the H9. So you're really not losing anything there. You know, a couple little features on the H10, it snaps in place um, instead of just the hook loop that you have on the Power Labs. But that is it, side by side. And let's take a look at the results for the accuracy itself. Okay, so here it is, the first workout. Just a bunch of snatch pulls, then wall walks, that torturous thing we learned in the open, and then uh, alternating dumbbell snatches and toes to bars, just an AMRAP towards the end. You can see that the actual H10 is in red and the Power Lab chest strap is in blue, and you can see that it's perfectly in line. There's obviously some areas where there's a little bit of variation, but absolutely analytically negligible. It is 100% not gonna make any difference on any of the analysis that you might get from the watches you're using. The rigor analysis, the training load analysis is gonna be the same. Here again, you have deadlifts, and then there were 400 meter running intervals and in ch in chest uh, bar coupled with at the end, I just did some extra work. And you can see one variation. This is the only time in testing where it seemed different, but the thing that's unique about this is that the chest strap actually lost connectivity. I took out the zeros, but it actually dropped all the way to zero. So there was a glitch going on with the H10 chest strap. This is not with the Power Labs, the H10 chest strap. You actually have smooth lines if you look between the lines on the Power Labs in blue. That is actually the accurate uh, heart rate. So this is more of a glitch on the H10 because I was wearing them side by side. And there's really no minor variations. This is a perfect lineup. And then the last one, sort of a double Metcon workout, and you can see that it just lined up perfectly, 100% accurate. In looking at these three, I just did not feel like it was worthwhile or necessary to test it across multiple workouts because you see that the accuracy is spot on, and the only slight difference was when there was actually a glitch with the H10. Um, 
some sort of interference probably because I'm wearing two chest straps. So let's talk about it in summary. And there you have it. I mean, it's $45. It obviously doesn't have the same quite build quality feel to it. The strap has obviously got the more narrow sort of uh, tagging area for tracking on the chest, but it absolutely keeps up across three workouts, and I'm not testing it across a bunch of workouts because it has just been spot on. There's minor variations, but I was wearing two chest straps at the same time. So take that for what it's worth. I would say in all honesty, for those of us in the CrossFit community that aren't looking to get cadence out of your heart rate monitor, that aren't looking to connect to multiple devices, you just have a watch and you need a chest strap. This is a great solution. It is a startup company, so hopefully they will find some solidity and continue to grow, so to continue to be around to offer you know, ideal solutions at this price point. But the simplicity of the electronics here is not like it's gonna get a bunch of upgrades or need a bunch of updates or anything like that. All it needs is a battery and to accurately work and connect to devices, and that is functioning well. So I would say this is a fantastic solution for the price point of $50, or if you get it on sale now, it's 10% off at $45 for a functionally useful, because everybody in the CrossFit High Intensity Interval Training has to have some sort of something to connect, to connect, to track your, your um, heart rate accuracy so that the metrics are all accurate on the devices that you're wearing. So with that, that is the Power Labs chest strap heart rate monitor. It's the Figure Hunter. Thanks so much for watching.